everyone. I'm Riza, one of the functional consultants at Online One. So today um, we're going to do a walkthrough for the allocation feature in NetSuite, specifically for the dynamic allocation using the statistical accounts. Let's just move to the next slide. So some things to discuss, I'll be sharing some allocation overview, how the setup will be done, a sample use case, the actual demo, and then Q&A. Quick overview. So as we all know, the expense allocation feature enables us to, um, to account for the fixed expenses without having to split them among the individual departments, location, and other segments in advance of incurring the expenses. So later on, you can transfer the expenses into different accounts and then assign the expenses to specific departments, classes, or location. So as an administrator, expense allocation feature must be enabled. And take note as well the, that the accounting period feature must be enabled to use the expense allocation. So as we all know, we have two different types of allocation. Um, the first one, which is we are very familiar, the static allocation. So this is the basic allocation where the expenses are distributed across segments used when allocating expenses using a manually identified assigned weights. So as mentioned, it uses a fixed allocation. And then for the next one, just a, an overview as well of a statistical account. So statistical accounts feature is part of the advanced financial module, which enables the user to track any non-monetary data and use that information on reports and income statements. So financial users can then um, examine its relationship with the financial activity of your organization. Next will now be the use of dynamic allocation, the second type, using the statistical accounts. This will be our focus for this session. The use of a statistical accounts for allocation of monetary figures or balances from posted transaction. In this case, the weight of the allocation is based on the balance of that statistical account through statistical journals as an absolute value and is dynamically calculate, calculated when the allocation journal is generated. Okay. Now for this slide, this only summarizes the differences between the two allocation types, which you can review as well. Now for the actual setup. This is now the actual setup that on how we can utilize this feature. The first one will be, of course, is to enable the statistical accounts and the dynamic allocation feature. Set up of the unit of measurement and then use that unit, unit of measurement in setting up our statistical account. The next one will be now is to generate a um, statistical journal entries, which is we have two different options doing it manually and also using a scheduled statistical schedule. Next would now be is the actual setup of the allocation schedule. And lastly, I'll be also showing you a sample transaction, a journal entry on how we can now use the dynamic allocation. So, okay. So for us to have a com comprehensible uh, idea about this functionality, Let's proceed with the most common use case. So AULTD is a subsidiary of HQ Group companies. So as a worldwide practice, expenses are being allocated by the company per department. So AULTD allocates is electricity consumption based on the number of employee assigned per department. Okay, so now I'll be sharing my NetSuite screen for the actual Azure demo. So as mentioned earlier, the first step is to enable the statistical accounts and dynamic allocation feature. So this can be found under the setup, company, and enable feature. And then under the accounting section, this is where we can see all the advanced features available. So in my case, it was already enabled. 
And the next step is for us to set up the unit of measurement, which can be found by the list, accounting, and then units of measure, new. So in our use case, what we would need is the number of employees. So we will be using a unit type called headcount. Then just set up the name, the plural name, or any abbreviation. Um, take note to tick the um, base unit as we are setting up the headcount. Now, we will now be setting up the statistical account. It's the same way on how we set up any accounts as well. So by the list, accounting, accounts, and who, or by the or by the option to use the setup, accounting, I think chart of accounts, then new. So we can quickly open our chart of accounts and then to open our existing statistical edit. So in our case, for any creation of new statistical account, make sure to select the type statistical and then select the unit of measurement that we have configured earlier. So select the head count. So take note that, as mentioned, statistical account are non-GL impacting, always a debit positive and is always excluded for any foreign currency translation. Note as well that this statistical account can be shared across your subs subsidiaries. So for the next step, um, I mentioned earlier that on how we will be entering data on our statistical accounts, we have two different, different options. The first one would be the manual creation of the statistical journal entries, which can be accessed by the transactions financial and then Make statistical journal entries. The statistical journal entries are used with the statistical account to make a single sided transactions by class, department, or any segments that we have. So, statistical accounts do not need to be in balance as they appear as a positive or a debit amount. So, um, in this case, what is more um, what is more desirable in our use case is the use of statistical schedule. But just an overview on how the manual journal entry for statistical would work. It's uh, the same as well. Just select the subsidiary, and then this will default some of the fields. And the statistical information, this is where you can see or select the uh, unit of measure type that you're using. So for example, head count. So what does this absolute update means? So the update of the multiple statistical accounts at the same time. So meaning if, we, if I take on this field, it will overwrite all the previous values that we have entered on the statistical account itself, okay? Now, for the second option, which is more desirable in our use case, is the use of the statistical schedule. The first thing that we need to do is to define our save search to retrieve the data that will then be used by the system as a weight basis for the allocation. So by the list, search, and then save search or new. Let me quickly open. Since we are retrieving a data from the employee record, our end goal is to have a safe search that will summarize us now the number of employees per department. So let's open this existing safe search and discuss some of the requirement or reminders on creating a safe search for a statistical schedule, which we'll be setting up later on. So in my case, I, I've then created a employee search and under the results tab, we need to have a column subtop. The first row must be a summary type, which should be a count or a sum. And in my case, this is the employee count. I used internal ID. And then there must also be at least one field summary type of group, which is now I'm using the department. So for a NetSuite One World, subsidiary is a mandatory, and we would need to use the group type summary. So if I now run the save search, this will now provide me the number or count of employee per department on each subsidiary. 
So now that we have our save search, we can now create our statistical schedule. So by the transactions, financial, and then create statistical schedule, we can simply open the So first is we need to identify any name just for us to see or have um, idea as to why we're creating the statistical schedule. And then, in, and then after adding to me, we can then select now the statistical account. So this is um, the statistical schedule will, is like the link for the um, statistical updates that we are expecting to have. So next is by selecting the statistical account, this already default the unit of measure, unit type, and also the subsidiaries. And under the save search, we can then select the save search that we have configured earlier. And we have the, uh, the ability to validate the save search itself. For the scheduling, it's a straightfor um, straightforward. We can simply add a frequency. So um, commonly, this type of update can be done on a manual basis since employees can be transferred into different departments depending on the use cases. Specify the start date, time zone, and so on. So upon saving this, it can let me just. So upon saving the statistical schedule, you also have the ability to manually run the statistical schedule by clicking on the create journal entry. So for example, there is an update on your employee records for the, de um, for the departments assigned to that particular employee. You can simply click on the create journal entry and under the execution log, it will then show you the, it will then show you if there is a change on the data that is existing for your statistical account. So a zero means no update and will not create any statistical journal entry. Just for okay. Now for the next step, it's now the actual creation of the allocation schedule. So by the transactions, financial, create allocation schedule open the existing one so for our use case we are what we would want is to distribute the elect uh, electricity expenses for each department depending on the number of employees assigned so it's a straightforward similar with the static allocation we are then required to enter the name of our allocation schedule and then note that um allocation schedule is assigned for subsidiary so if you think that we will need to have the same use case in or you are then required to create the allocation for the other subsidiary frequency will be on a monthly next date you can set as well and on the allocation mode this is where we we will now be selecting the dynamic allocation selecting the dynamic al allocation will then allow us to um, select the weight source, which is the statistical account headcount. Uh, take note as well that it's not really necessary to have a statistical schedule for dynamic allocations. You can still utilize the manual um, way as well. And now under the source tab, we will now be selecting the expense account. So in our case, Next, we will now do the allocation when the posting on the expense account is um, department. There is no any department assigned, and that transaction was tagged to any um, location, class, and so on. For the destination um, subtab, we can then simply select the auto populate for the department, and then as we as we generate the allocation allocation entries for this for our transaction it will then automatically get what is based on our weight source okay so now for us to test this dynamic allocation we can simply create a journal entry by using the expense account specified in our source so right transactions financial and then journal entries
select Australia as our subsidiary and then select our create a debit expense to our electric uh, electricity account let's leave the department unassigned and then select class advisory or location in Perth a debit 100 and then to our bank which is which is check Okay. So after verifying all the fields, we can just simply save this transaction. Okay, so now that we did the posting to the expense account specified in our dynamic allocation, we can quickly go back into the allocation schedule and click on the create journal entry. So note that to run the allocation, um, this can be added as well on the reminders portlet. So oh, let me quickly edit the date. And then create journal entry. Okay. Now, now you will then be redirected right away for the um, journal entry generated from the allocation. So we can simply click on approve. And then it will now specify the allocation of expenses based on the weight on our statistical accounts. For us to see on the data of information about the weights assigned to each department, we can simply go back into the allocation schedule. And then under the history. Okay, click on the detail link. And under the destination, you'll be able to see um, the balances for each department statistical accounts and then the amount distributed for each department. Um, that's it on how the dynamic allocation for the statistical account will work. So let me just quickly go back into the slides. And for other resources that might be applicable to you, um, you can simply check on the sweet answers as well. So thanks everyone.